Now we're going to go to Brazil and have a chat there. I'm going to ask Marcus later. Where's Marcus? He's coming. Up. Oh, there he is. Fantastic. And we're going to look at um, the Brazilian market. Marcus is the, uh, Marcos is the CEO of Zap Plus, which um, my, my, I've got a bit of a history with, with Zap. It goes back to when there was Viva Real and there was Zap and the two came together and I was an early investor in Viva Real. So I love what you're doing now because eventually Grupo Zap got sold over to OLX. Yes. So Marcus is going to talk about what's next for Brazil's market leading real estate marketplace. Excellent. Thank you, so Simon. Thank you. thank you, everyone. Good afternoon. I hope you're all doing well. It's a pleasure to be here. It's my first time um, actually speaking at uh, Property Portal Watch, my second time at the conference. Um, so I thought, thought I would start by uh, actually introducing myself. And since I've been at the company for, since the beginning of OLX, uh, it also tells a little bit of, this, of, of our story uh, over, over the last 10 years, uh, for those of you who don't know. So I've always worked in tech. I'm a Dutch-Brazilian guy. I worked in tech in Amsterdam for many years, and then I was sent by Naspers to uh, Brazil to actually uh, run OLX uh, about 11 years ago. And um, so we have been building it uh, over the last 10 years. And we created basically the online classifieds category in Brazil uh, as, a, as a horizontal classified, also the biggest brand and the biggest volume. And, and that became very concrete when we, when we as uh, OLX, that, uh, that was owned by Naspers, uh, together with Bon Negocio that was uh, owned by Shipstead and uh, today at Devinta. We actually merged um, to create uh, the leading uh, horizontal classified uh, back in 2015. There's a few people in the room who were uh, involved with this uh, as well uh, back in the day. Uh, before this, we were investing a lot of money creating the category, a lot of marketing investment to make sure the brand was very strong. And from that moment, we could actually go into monetization mode. And that, that's what we did after. We uh, basically scale monetization and, um, and we also created the autos and the real estate uh, verticals, uh, first within the horizontal. And, and very quickly it became clear that uh, we're actually going head to head uh, in autos with the leading um, uh, cars vertical. Uh, and, and that's still true till today as a horizontal platform. But we were a, a far player in the real estate business. And then back in 2019, we heard that, um, that uh, Grupo Zappi was raising some money. And we made the audacious offer to buy the entire company. And, uh, and, uh, and it worked out. So, uh, so from that, we became also the leading player, uh, as both as a horizontal and also with the two leading uh, vertical sites um, in, uh, in Brazil as well. So we have, we have a really good position on these two verticals. So I led that acquisition of Grupo Zappi to become leader, uh, head of real estate, and now I'm the head of real estate within OLX Brazil, which is now called uh, Grupo OLX. I'll help you guys pronounce it uh, whenever we have a few uh, drinks later, okay? So, uh, Brazil is a, is a very large market, right? 220 million people in the country. Uh, everybody needs a home, so there's more than 1 million uh, official sales transactions in, uh, in Brazil. We do have more than that, but there's a lot of uh, transactions that are non-official. So basically, if you calculate the, the entire commission pool of the Brazilian real estate market for, uh, for brokers and agents and for sale, it's about uh, 22 billion uh, reais, which is about 5, five uh, billion uh, dollars. So it's a very large market, and, uh, and a lot of people want a piece of this, uh, of this commission pool. Which, uh, which gets us to a very challenging marketplace and, uh, and has many particularities, the, the Brazilian market. So here on the left-hand side, uh, the market and, uh, and the economy, they have a very large impact. So uh, if you look at Brazil over the last 20 years, um, everything that happened was hard to predict. <laughs> And also, even, also everything in the economy that we've seen over the last few years was also hard to predict. So it's, uh, and, and, and whenever there's many big changes in the market uh, and the economy, it, it impacts the real estate uh, business um, immediately. It's a very competitive landscape, very large market, many inefficiencies. A lot of people want to be part and try to solve many of these problems, which is great. So you get a lot of investment uh, in the market. If you look at uh, the last five years, there have been five times more the investment and the amount of, of prop tax and construct tax that have actually uh, started in Brazil. And some of them are going to be also in the, in the pitch later on and are here in the, uh, the event. Um, very bureaucratic um, uh, and a lot of regu regu regulatory issues in Brazil. Um, and and you know, there's a saying that Brazil is not for amateurs. And if anybody has operated in Brazil, you actually know that that's, uh, that's uh, very much true. And both the brokers and agents, so the BNA experience and also the user experience of buying and selling a home is still quite poor. So there's a very large 
large opportunity. So just for context, uh, Malcolm had a, a slide about around the percentage of the commission pool for leading players in, uh, in mature markets, and those will range between 4 and, and 7 percent. And for Brazil, it's 1.5 uh, it's, uh, percent. So, so that means that the, that the potential for to actually uh, double or triple uh, the, the size of the market and classify is still very, very high. Um, on the right-hand side is some specific things about the market. So it's non-exclusive, and this is a real problem. It's just, it's just, I think this happens in many um, emerging markets. Uh, this creates many issues in the market itself. So it uh, creates a lot of competition between brokers, but also a, a lot of bad competition between brokers. It incentivizes the homeowners to actually work with many different brokers for one listing. That means that all of those brokers are going to put the listings on the property sites, it, it, it's, uh, and that, and that um, results in a lot of duplicates, and it's a bad user experience. So uh, there's a market dynamic which is... Um, which is, uh, which is poor here, but at the same time, the 6% commission fee, which is really high, and, and at the same time, low barriers of entry. So that means that um, there's a lot of brokers, it's quite easy to get into the, into the brokerage profession, and a lot of people want to have a part of the 6%. And, and also at the same time, it's still low on a digital adoption, uh, and if anybody has actually tried buy a house uh, in Europe versus buying a house in Brazil, you straight away, you, you tell uh, the difference whenever talking to... Uh, to how digital or, 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 or the service that a broker, on average, can actually provide. So, so that's the context of the market. So what, what about Olex Brazil or, or Grupo LX? We are, uh, yeah, by far the leaders in, uh, in inventory, so in listings uh, in, uh, in Brazil, and also uh, by far have the largest audience, because we not only do we have the biggest, but also have the three biggest portals on aggregate. Uh, even if you talk about um, you know monthly visits, we we're about to have about seven percent market share, given that we have uh, all the different portals. You know, so it's a very good position to be in, uh, and also uh, a lot of responsibility in terms of you know how to build the market going forward, given that everybody is looking at our portals when they're actually trying to to buy something. So, and and also we're seen as uh, let's say an authority uh, in terms of intelligence, data, and education. And for Brazil, I think this means a lot because. Uh, there's very little public data available for real estate transactions, so a lot of it had to be built uh, by, by ourselves. And I'll talk uh, a little more about, uh, about it later. Um, and this is really important because intelligence means that you can... Uh, it, it, it's mainly around pricing, and if you can price a property uh, properly, uh, you know, there's many opportunities to actually improve the market itself and improve the clients and improve the experience of the, of the user as well. Um, Management tools, um, uh, as also as uh, Coin Malcolm for a second time now, as Malcolm said, said earlier, we can't just uh, increase our revenue just by having more premium products. I, well, I actually see that over time, premium products are having less effective uh, results than it did uh, years ago because the, the, the highest listing is not necessarily the best one for that user. So we need other ways to actually try to help the broker and as a consequence, uh, monetize that, both with performance and also uh, intelligence tools. And the third thing is education. So education is really important uh, because, uh, because the brokers are, are, are in general, are not that well connected to how they can actually use the tools in a better way. Uh, so we have the biggest um, industry event in Brazil. It's called Connect Imobi. I'll show some pictures in the very last slide. And it's funny because uh, talking last night with uh, Simon, he actually sponsored the very first one uh, years ago, and uh, we had about, uh, I think it was uh, about 100 people in that picture. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and for last week we had, or two weeks ago, we had the 10th the, the version of the event, and there's more than close to 7,000 brokers actually at that, that event, right? So it's a, a lot of people, and they, and they come to our event because they really feel that they need to, uh, to improve their, um, their, uh, uh, yeah, their knowledge and, uh, and, and, and how they can improve their day-to-day. Their -day. So that puts in a good position um, to really unlock value in the real estate given, uh, given, uh, given this position and also improve the brokers and agents' experience. So, as I said earlier, so the journey is very, is very complex in Brazil, right? So, and this is looking from a broker perspective, right? So if you still look at uh, what comes after the discovery itself, you still see that um, in general they have a very hard time managing their leads, you know, just as, uh, as we saw in the presentation earlier today. Uh, from our friends at uh, Proper Finder. Uh, there's still like no online calendar 
that, uh, where you can actually attract and manage visits. You know? So this brings a lot of inefficiency uh, to the actual broker. Difficulty communication to the landlord, right? So without the proper tools, also everything just becomes very much phone-based and offline. There's still a lack of uh, really good and scalable rental guarantees, a lot of long SLAs to prove the customer. Still credit analysis is still a big issue. And also property maintenance issues is still, still very hard to resolve with the landlord. So these are, there's many issues, and in our view, uh, you need to actually try to solve them, uh, not all of them at once, but actually one at a time, and in a way that's actually visible uh, to, the, to, the, to the broker. And what we see in Brazil is that a lot of the competition that has come into this space, a lot of, a lot of uh, not, sorry, I said competition, I meant just prop tax, they come into the space, um, they're actually trying to solve exactly this problem. So it's, uh, they're really trying to have tools that they can uh, provide to the broker to actually get a higher share of that commission pool that I showed, right? And, um, and they try to do it in different ways, right? And I think this is where, um, uh, this is where w w we can be in a good position because uh, how you monetize it is actually what makes a difference if you can actually, if the, if you can actually work with a broker or if it's going to be potentially a disaster. Right? So, so what do I mean by that, right? Is that um, uh, since we are a, since we are, uh, you know, so since we have been in the market for a very long time, and we have very good relationships uh, with the brokers, um, and, and a very, um, and also sales approach that's very, uh, very, very close uh, to the actual market, we are able to actually provide tools that maybe in the past they wouldn't want to, they wouldn't want to actually work with the portal for those tools. You know, so for example, I'll show you a little bit our, our lead, man, lead management system for within the brokerage. Um, but then there's, there's, there's uh, companies that, that come in and, uh, and have tried to do this model by having a, a, a share of the, of the of, uh, a revenue share of the model. And, that's, and it has not been working out so well in Brazil so far because uh, the broker, he needs to understand, um, he needs to see on a uh, day-to-day -day basis how a lead management is going to improve his day-to-day -day operation. So, oh, I can see that by doing this, I need less people to operate my business. Uh, with the online calendar, for example, I need to, I can see that I can actually get more visits per broker, and that's very tangible for him. For him, a full-blown solution where he can actually go end-to-end -end to the transaction is very hard to actually understand in the very, very short term. So there's different ways to do it, and you need to build it out over time. And that's what we've actually been doing with, with our solution. So over the last few years, uh, over the last uh, three years, we have been working on, on a great product um, that, uh, that tries to solve a lot of these issues. But we go, we go one at a time. This is actually, a, I think, a video, but it's not really uh, running right now. And, and so, it's a, so it's a, it is a full flat solution that we, that we offer to, uh, to our brokers. So we already have all the relationships, and we don't have like a cost of acquisition, so the economics are also quite positive. And um, uh, so, so we have the full flat solution, but we also make it modular. Modular meaning that you know, if a broker in, a, in the outskirts of Sao Paulo does not understand or doesn't need uh, you know, a, a, a payments or, or a rental guarantee solution or, or, a co or a digital contract signature because he thinks it's way too complex, he can actually just buy the lead management, which means a lead can come from anywhere, uh, on the, uh, or, or from the portals, or from uh, TikTok, whatever, and it actually gets distributed to one of his, to, to his brokers, and if his broker doesn't respond within a few minutes, it actually goes back to another broker to make sure that there's very fast customer service for, uh, for, um, you know, for, for his client, uh, whereas all of this was actually, is actually done quite, uh, quite manually uh, if, if this, uh, if this uh, tool doesn't exist, for example, right? So this is a way for us to actually help the broker and, get, you know, and, and make their uh, operation more efficient. And this, is, this has been built by, by a great team that has, uh, has a lot of knowledge about how, how brokerages work. Uh, and even acquisition that we made by, by people that have actually worked in brokerages before and understand this day to day uh, very well. Uh, so this has reduced um, their, basically the, the, the entire journey by more than 5x. Uh, so, and, and we've been doing this on a very small scale so far, um, but, uh, and because we really wanted to get the product right, and then we're going to be scaling that forward um, as, an, as, as a next step. And the second part is around data. So the data is, uh, is, is, is a really important part. As I said earlier, there's not a lot of public data around real estate transactions in Brazil or real estate pricing. Um, um, so uh, so we, we had to build it ourselves. So we started doing that in 2014. This originated by, uh, by Zap. Um, 
And it's really important because especially as, um, so, so pricing is really important because it helps everybody along the value chain, but it's also, all this data is also very important, especially the history of data that we have, especially as we move towards a more AI-powered world, this is what's gonna make, uh, make, actually make these language models be, uh, be much more exact and really help the industry as a whole. So, uh, so we have so the, the, the best automated uh, or EVM model in Brazil. It's a database that uh, really looks at a number of different, um, uh, a number of different data, but actually looks at, at the Zappi's data from since it was launched back in uh, 2000. Uh, and, uh, and so actually, actually able to see over time the fluctuations in price of a, of a specific property. Uh, and also have a specialist team around us of just engineers and economists to be able to actually build something like this. So we're now on the, the, the ninth year uh, operating this, uh, this database, and it's the, the biggest in Brazil. And, and it's great for the user, right, because we have uh, really good pricing solutions. So not only that, then that he can actually make a better decision as in terms of knowing whether that price is fair or it's above the market or below the market. Uh, there's many other products that we can actually um, that we, can, uh, that we can make from this, like uh, calculated rental yields, for example, over time. But we, but we also have the FIPI Zap, which is the, the, the main index for real estate pricing in Brazil. So any news item that you see on the, on the, on the newspaper, on the news, 8 o'clock news, it's always, going to, it's always going to, in most cases, uh, come from, the, from us, or FIPI Zap, which, and FIPI is the biggest institute for pricing many different goods in Brazil. So that's a very important position to be in. Uh, for brokers, it's great because uh, it's, it's very fast, so it's AI-powered, uh, so, uh, so actually able to, we're actually able to, to real-time tell uh, the broker whenever he's actually on our tools whether, he's, uh, whether the pricing, or he's actually pricing that right, so he can actually adjust that before it actually goes live. And we are, you know, actually sell these studies for, to developers, um, so, so if a developer was actually wants to build a new property, they actually buy studies from us uh, so that they, they can make a decision what it should be you know, 20 floors or 10 floors or 250 square meter apartments or 50 square meter apartments or studios, you know, so, so, so we end up being the, the, database, the, the database for that. So really help them in a really big way. So <laughs> the spectrum is really big on how, on how we, uh, we apply this, right? So, so uh, yeah, the AVM uh, really shows uh, really, really, really small ranges in the, in the price. So it tells you, so the range is not that big for a price. Uh, uh, for a certain property, it will also show the, the, the heat map in terms of the, the variations that you can see in a certain region that you, that you, get, to, uh, to, uh, that you get to choose. We have what we call uh, typological variations, so basically the developers that use the model to determine the price based on exclusion or inclusion of attributes, so it's actually quite easy to navigate. You just kind of say like, you know, what is it that you want, and then we actually come up with a price for it. We have a spatial perspective as well, so in Sao Paulo we have the, uh, biggest, we have the biggest avenue of, uh, of Brazil, it's called the Vida Paulista, and uh, you know, if you are in the beginning or at the end, or depending on the building that you're in, I mean, the price is going to be completely different. So actually, uh, able to take this, uh, this um, actually able to give good pricing in real time on this, and also uh, a temporal variation. So it means that uh, what I just said earlier, that over time, you can really see what it, what has been the variation of that specific property uh, over time, and then and also that tells you, um, you know, what is it you should, what is what is it going to be. Um, a price for in the future. And it's, it's, and, and it's really important because if you just take transactional data, it doesn't tell you that much because um, whenever you actually have the listing data together with it, plus all the, all the research that we, that we do, uh, you're, actually able to, uh, you're actually able to see that once the listing price uh, it starts going down before the transaction price starts actually going down. So, actually, so our model is actually able to be uh, much more exact than, uh, than, than just purely using the transaction. And this is a, uh, I, don't know, I don't know if this is going to work, let's see, there you go. So this is an example, so I mean, you sh we're still working on the, uh, on the UX of this, uh, of this product, so it's still, you have to put in the fields uh, uh, yourself. If you, need, if you need to understand for your property how much this is actually going to, um, yeah, going to, uh, yeah, going to be priced as. So you can put, uh, you know, what is the, the size of your property and, uh, and, uh, and, and just a few different details, so it takes you a few seconds to actually, uh, to, uh, to actually get to fill this out. And then immediately after this, we'll just send uh, basically, basically this report, but it's like within seconds. And then once, once you go down, you actually get uh, uh, all, the all, all the characteristics they actually put in. 
um, yeah, it's a map to show if, uh, what, whether there's exact location or not. And then we actually show you like the variations and a lot of information um, around the actual region, you know, and, and actually and also helps you make a better decision as a, uh, as a user. Uh, if you want to move to somewhere cheaper, you know where uh, to look for to get something cheaper, where to move for if you want something better, more expensive. Yeah, and all this happens through uh, education, right? So this is a photo from my event from two weeks ago, more than 6,000 brokers. Uh, and, this is, uh, and this is really important because this is really where we're able to bring all the players in the market, also all the prop techs, um, uh, talk about new products that are being launched. Um, uh, and, and that's how they get capacitated as well and excited about working with us uh, even further. And with, uh, there's some more pictures here, and with uh, 10 seconds to go, that's it. Thank you all. Marcos, thanks for sharing that, and it's great yeah. to see how that conference has grown from, it was less than 100 people, I can tell you that much, <laughs> wow. at that. And I didn't sponsor it, I just had my name there, just be yeah. clear. Um, how do you handle the problem of non-exclusive mandates? You know, duplication, bad listing, yes. bad listing quality, et cetera, on your portal? Yes, um, so um, we're actually, we're launching the, my aim is that by the end of this year, all of our portals are gonna have uh, no duplications anymore. Um, and we do it in a, a number of different ways, so actually, we actually developed this model over time, so it took us some time to actually get, get it right, but we're actually able to get with 95% accuracy, uh, see, see whether a, 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 an actual listing is actually duplicate or not. Uh, so we do both on a, uh, on a, te on a tax level and also on a, by, by comparing little differences, etc. And right now we're actually adding also the, uh, the, uh, the image part, right? To so actually see, look, if you take a, f a photograph in many different angles, actually can recognize whether it's actually a difficult listing or not, and that, that's also going to the model. Right, so, so, so AI is going to be a yes. friend in this case. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So actually, good, actually using libraries of AI to be able to actually uh, recognize that. Okay, which makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, I see you offer consumers uh, on the platform a chat option on listings. What is this? Is it, you know, what about, you know, yeah. Is WhatsApp as a, uh, as a contact option? So how, how does that operate? There is there's chat. So if you look at OLX, uh, at OLX uh, real estate, so the horizontal, there is a, a chat option. But the WhatsApp is also an option if you actually go to the verticals. You know? So you, you can actually chat directly with your, with your, with our, your clients from there. OK. Um, does uh, Zapway also help agents score and nurture leads? Yes. So we actually score the leads. Uh, actually, we, we actually score the leads for them. right? So whenever we actually send the leads to Zapway, and they actually log in, they can actually see whether this is a, a cold lead or is it actually a, a medium lead or is actually a very hot one. So, uh, so we, we, we do that through, uh, yeah, through the process uh, ourselves, you know. But so, so how do you score a lead? I mean, what, what is it? No, we do it as a, uh, well, yeah, so we do it, as, so, so we, we, we map what is being written, right? So if somebody says, hey, um, uh, I'm, I'm just wondering about, I'm just wondering, uh, it's next to what street, for example, right? So, so maybe that's a bit colder, right? But somebody says, look, you know, I am, uh, I'm a bit more interested, you know, uh, I was just wondering whether there's another, uh, another room or something, and let's book mm -hmm. a visit, you know, then it's like a hotter lead, right? So basically just track it and score it straight away. They can see, and they can prioritize which ones he should go after uh, sooner. Okay. Yeah. Do, you, uh, do you engage in any conversation with the lead, the consumer, about no, that lead? No, no, we don't. Are you Not thinking yet. about yes, doing that? absolutely. Yes. So you can then get better qualification, better yes. understanding. Yes, exactly. And also, I mean, there's many, uh, I, think, I think I saw in your presentation today, a company called Air was in somebody's slide. Maybe it was uh, in somebody's opening. Yep. It was yours, right? Yeah. I actually used that example in the, at Connecting Mob uh, two weeks ago. Uh, actually, I'm talking to the CEO to actually try to get that implemented. Because it's basically, Air will basically do is, uh, if you think it's a person, but it's not really a person, right? It's, uh, <laughs> so it becomes much, uh, like a much faster, a much cheaper way to actually qualify a lead. Because you actually do it by phone ends up being a lot more expensive, a lot, a lot more people, right? And if the AI does it, it's just seamless, you know? Okay. So. Um, what percentage of agent revenue do classifieds take in Brazil? Yes. And what will it be in five years? Yeah, so, um, so uh, classifieds, as I said in the very beginning, so right now in Brazil, it's 1.5% of the entire commission pool. Um, and we, you know, I believe this can be 3x over time. Yeah, to okay. get to the levels that we see. Uh, that we see yeah, because 1.5% is pretty low. Yeah, it's still but low. It's a very different type of market as well. Very different type. A lot of it is still offline. So the total commission pool also, also grows over time. Right? So. Okay. Last question. Uh, can you share some of the numbers of how much uh, Bob Negocio 
and OLX is spending on advertising prior to the merger and how it's ended up spending today. Oh, wow, yeah, I can share some of that. So it was a lot before, so I think 2015, uh, I think we both put in $100 million, uh, and then that went down to, uh, that we cut that by 10x a year after the merger. And that's been basically constant since then, okay? So we've been spending about, uh, let's say, 8% of total revenue, which is by, on the lower end of, uh, of, of, of global benchmarks, you know? Okay. So, okay, so, and, that's, and that's purely because of the fact that you have numbers one, two, and three in the yeah, market. That helps so a lot. <laughs> it definitely helps a lot. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much, Marcus. Thank you, Simon. Thank you all. Excellent. Appreciate it. Yes. Thank you.